views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hello and welcome to Open University from our BronxNet eStudios where we keep you in the loop on current discussions in and around the community. I'm your host Nicole Arasi and we have a wonderful show for you today. Coming up on today's show, we'll sit down with an independent artist to discuss her latest artwork revolving around the Black Lives Matter movement. Plus, we'll be joined by a Bronx native that has plans to open up her own bookstore right here in the South Bronx. After that, we'll sit down with the founder of the, fashion, of the Bronx Fashion Week to talk about their new upcoming fashion show, Young Fashionistas. So sit back, relax, and let me keep you in the loop with a brand new episode of Open University. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm your host, Nicole Arasi. Over the past couple of years, we have witnessed police brutality and the countless deaths of young black men, which eventually sparked protests all over the country, along with the creation of the Black Lives Matter movement. Joining us to discuss her, art coming, her upcoming art show, Black Lives Matter, please welcome Carla Cubitt. Hi, Carla. Hi, nice Nicole. to meet you. Hi, How Nicole. Are you? Nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and how you started off as an artist. Well, mm -hmm. um, I've actually been showing artwork around the New York City area for probably the past 20 years or so. Formerly as an outsider artist, I was with a folk art gallery in Manhattan. But recently, my works have been motivated by the Occupy Wall Street movement mm -hmm. and the Black Lives Matter movement. So I'm trying to incorporate like those things into my artwork whenever possible now. So I haven't really been doing as much as my regular artwork lately. What would your reg what, so what's the difference between your regular artwork well, and what you I, do now? I guess my regular artwork from like where is um, I. I I would describe it as small mixed media assemblage pieces used in many found objects that are highly visionary mm -hmm. in nature. Wow, that's interesting. Do you, so it's not like your traditional oil well, painting? Well, like sculptures, on, right, it's okay. <laughs> using a lot of found objects. So. Right, I see that, that you find objects and you create art out of and it. I, and I try to create art out of that. So, so now tell us, how do you do that? Um, while incorporating the Black Lives Matter and Occupy Wall Street uh, movement? Well, for, for my Black Lives Matter art show, mm -hmm. it's kind of completely different. I've actually been making handmade jewelry, which I actually have. Um, mm -hmm. I have Black Lives Matter necklaces, magnets, and keychains that I'm planning to sell for a dollar each as part of my Black Lives Matter art show mm -hmm. at Chashima. At Chashima? Yes, so for this Black Lives Matter art show at yes. Chashima, um, for my Black Lives Matter art shows, they're usually composed of like banners mm -hmm. and posters where people can, um, share their thoughts on Black Lives Matter. I have a few banners where people have written their thoughts mm. on Black Lives Matter. And um, some of my artwork that I've created are really just posters that say Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. And then I was gonna ask you, so for, for this art show that's coming up, now you've mentioned Chashima, is that? I'm Chashima. Say, Chashima. Explain, where, is that where it's at? Or? Yeah, it's gonna okay. be, this Black Lives Matter art show is gonna be at Chashima which is located at uh, 266 West 37th Street in Manhattan. Okay. There's a storefront gallery, which look for this, look for this flyer. <laughs> <laughs> if you're walking down the street, I'm gonna be hanging a bunch of these, these flyers in the window. I'm gonna have my Black Lives Matter necklaces, which I wanted to display. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of forgot to bring them there outside. It's okay. You're gonna find my Black Lives Matter necklaces in the window. I'm gonna be vending them for like 99 cents each, uh, for like a dollar each, my magazine and keychains. And the opening reception is supposed to be um, August 5th. So this is all taking place August 5th? Yes, August 5th. At Chashima? At Chashima in New York 30, City. In New York City on 37th Street. Street from 6 to 8. Okay. And um, I'm probably gonna do a performance uh, that's police related and can you explain that like what kind of performance well if be? I was to be specific I'm gonna sing a no police state song okay <laughs> that so I you sing as well I sing as well okay and there's gonna be a speaker after my performance uh, from the stop mass incarceration network 
And can I say a bit about the Stop Mass Incarceration Network? What is that? Can? can you explain to viewers? Um, Stop Mass Incarceration Network, who are going to be at the reception, are like a, an organization um, who organize around police brutality, mm -hmm. and they organize around um, uh, racial injustice, mm -hmm. police injustice. They've had protests, rallies, and demonstrations against shutdown Rikers, if I can say. Mm -hmm. They've had recent protests and dem uh, demonstrations and rallies at Union Square Park for, um, I think uh, his name was Philando, Cast Philando Castile, mm -hmm. was the most recent victim of police brutality who was killed by police. They've had rallies for Eric, Eric Garner, and they do um, events around the city whenever there's police injustice you'll find them mm -hmm. so they're gonna so speak they're like and they're gonna hopefully okay. have literature and talk about their organization okay and um, so the so what would you say the main goal of the art show is bring awareness or uh, well the main goal of you know I do I do Occupy art shows I do Black Lives Matter art mm -hmm. shows and they're all inspired by mm -hmm. Occupy Wall Street and Black Lives Matter Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. So I guess the main goal would just to be like to spread the word mm -hmm. about about um, Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. through through art to spread the word about police injustice, racial injustice, mm -hmm. and police brutality um, through art, uh, uh, open mics, culture jams, th through discussions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for my Black Lives Matter art shows, I have um, open mics. Mm -hmm. I've done them at festivals. Uh, different events. So it's kind of like a place where people can vent, yeah, let I've, out their I've, frustration. I've, ha I've had these shows outside also mm -hmm. at festivals and I sometimes do open mics so people can share their thoughts on like through open mics. Right. As well as writing your thoughts on banners and posters. So, you know, what, what would you like to see happen between community and police? Like what would you, what would be something well, that you would like to see? Basically, you know, stop killing black people. <laughs> you know, what's, what's, the, what's the purpose of How do you think we can, like how do you think as a community oh, yeah. and as a society we can, like do you have any thoughts on I, I, you know, what you I'm would like banner, to see? I'm a banner, uh, uh, the most common thing that's written on my banners are all lives matter. Okay. That's a response to black lives matter. Right. And someone responded, well if all lives matter then we wouldn't be having this discussion. <laughs> So what will it take to, yeah. you know, stop killing black people? I'm not as sure, mm -hmm. but I would hope to raise the raise the issue to right. ra to raise the di to raise the discussion mm -hmm. about police brutality. Right, and that's exactly what it seems like you're going to be doing for this uh, event and for any future events that you have uh, coming up. What can people? Can you give us a little idea of what kind of art? Um, as well as uh, aside from the necklaces that we would be expecting from this, you know, art I showcase? have those. You know, I brought those <laughs> necklaces with me, and I forgot to bring them here to the studio because <laughs> I was going to display them. Oh, it's okay. Well, you so, can just you know, like describe a couple of pieces that might <clears throat> um, be shown. Well, of course, I keep saying I'm going to have necklaces, magnets, and keychains that I've been, and okay. they specifically say I can't breathe. Okay. And they so you took slogans and you incorporated I just took it. Slogans, in art. you know, these are my Black Lives Matter. Some of them are I can't breathe. Right, right. That's and, very and true. and of course the, I, I have my own art and I, I have photos from protests mm -hmm. that I've been um, attending in the New York City area for yeah. the past year. Uh, so I'm going to be displaying some of some of my photos okay. of different protests. I'm going to um, some of the photos are from stop mass incarceration events okay. that they've had. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a fun, jam-packed night. So if you guys remember, she said August 5th from 6 to 8 p.m. on West 37th Street at Chashima. <laughs> Thank you so much. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. Hello, good people of the Bronx and beyond. Welcome to A Life in Art.
Welcome, everybody. We are open. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS. You can catch me on there each and every night right after the quiet storm. You can catch me right here on open, 10 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. Let's just call it on the tens and then just keep it tuned. And we got you covered like a blanket, okay? I'm out in the community and we're all over the place because we are now open. <laughs> shoulders your shoulders is a three-tier muscle you have your front delt you have your rear delt and you have your mid delt so when you're working out your shoulders properly you have to do three different exercises it's wonderful being able to compete with a lot of these young guys from all over the world it's important to stay in shape Last week, we sat down with an entrepreneur to talk about the latest news on her upcoming bookstore. Let's take a look. As numerous bookstores continue to shut down, many people, especially Bronxites, are left with no place to comfortably read and socially bond over books. Our next guest plans to create a space that will not only broaden the horizon of Bronx residents, but will give upcoming authors the chance to showcase their books. Please welcome the owner and founder of The Lit Bar, Noel Santos. Welcome, Noel. How Thank are you? Thank you so much for having me. No I'm problem. Good. It's great to meet you, and I want to hear all about this Lit Bar. I think it's a great idea. You don't really see many bookstores in the Bronx, sadly. So tell us about it. Get, let's get right into it. Tell us about yourself and how you came up with this idea. Okay. So um, I'm a Bronx native and resident. I'm from Soundview, and I've lived in Cretona Park East for about the past 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. And um, I came up with the Lit Bar um, at a time when there was a petition going around to keep the existing um, bookstore, Barnes & Noble, that we do have in Co-op City open. Mm -hmm. um, so I joined that petition. I got my, all my friends involved. And during that process, I realized that that was the only bookstore in the entire borough. and um, it was really disheartening as a reader and mm -hmm. um, you yes. know and you know as a Bronx resident that there was you know not really a home for me and so many people here and 10 colleges and um, so I decided to do something about it that's <laughs> so. amazing not many people actually act on that I, I I'm from that neighborhood mm -hmm. I remember when they spoke about the Barnes and Nobles closing down I was devastated because I would spend <laughs> weekends there <laughs> that was like my hangout I love that place yeah. anyway so um, how did you get into this? Like, how did you actually make it happen? So the first thing that I did was I reached out to other booksellers all over the nation, um, mm. particularly um, booksellers that were, that featured a wine bar in their stores. Mm. So um, I was immediately embraced by everyone. Wow. Um, everyone wanted to just share their stories, give me as many resources and connections as they possibly could um, to help me along in my journey. And then my next step was to join um, the trade association um, for my industry, the American Booksellers Association. Mm. So they gave me um, a blueprint of tools and resources to get started on my journey. Um, one of those steps, um, a major component was completing my business plan, mm -hmm. um, which I've submitted to the New York Public Library business plan competition. So we'll Amazing. actually find out if we're a finalist the week of July 25th, and then we'll find out if we're a winner um, I believe the first week in September. Wow. Yeah, so the grand prize there is $15,000. Wow. So, um, and, you know, it's a literary, you know, organization that's, you know, ho holding this competition. Right, so right. the exposure from that would um, mean everything to this project. And we should mention that you have a blog, right? And that's how 
Was that how you were able to get a big network going with this? Absolutely. Um, with advertising? So um, I blog at First Noel, one S T N O E L L E dot com. Mm -hmm. And um, it started out as just a, a financial literacy blog. I wanted right. to help millennials understand, you know, credit and other personal finance topics. And then as I got involved with the book, the, the Lit Bar, um, I started chronicling my journey to opening the store. Oh, that's cool. So someone caught wind of it, um, and it just spread like wildfire. <laughs> like wildfire. I know, you've been featured on um, other networks. Yes. And, um, you, yeah, your name is really uh, growing out there. Yes. Um, and what made you choose the name Lit Bar? So it, we are, a funny story, it originally was called Lit Book Bar, mm. and um, the lit has a double meaning, lit like literature, lit uh, like drunk. <laughs> good one. And, um, but it was such a mouthful, and yeah. people just kept calling it the Lit Bar, <laughs> so I'm like, let's just go with it. Sounds good. And yeah. I think it has a little New York twang to it. <laughs> and what, what should people expect when they walk into the Lit Bar? What are they going to see? Tell us about the decor. I, um, I hear that you were going for a certain look and a certain ambiance. So um, beyond the um, literary impact that the Lit Bar is going to have in the borough, there's mm -hmm. also a deep symbolism behind our, mis our mission. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring in a business that reflects the progression in the Bronx and you know mm -hmm. socioeconomic growth here. And so what we want to do is we want to incorporate graffiti um, as well as elegant touches like chandeliers and um, you know textures and things of that nature to show that graffitis and chandeliers do mix that um, you know that existing Bronx culture um, can grow and we can be sophisticated and intertwine it absolutely like Art Deco meets graffiti yes that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> that's really really cool um, and so tell us about how people could get involved in your book club, because you have a book club. Yes. Right. So, so um, I started the book club, club. It's called Readers and Shakers. Mm -hmm. And the okay. premise, it's for women. Okay. And um, any age can join. And they can do that right from our website at thelitbar.com. And the premise behind the bookstore is to, we read a book every month, and mm -hmm. then we take activities that are inspired by the stories that we read to help keep the, you know, have those stories live with us forever. So um, we'll be inspired by a topic and mm -hmm. then we'll, you know, then we'll do some type of activity around it. Give an example. So, um, so our last two stories took place in France. So we're actually talking about a trip from, trip from France. Wow. Um, we've read a couple of books that have turned into movies. So we'll go to the movies. Um, what else have we done? We've done so much. We read a lot of wine labels as well as books. <laughs> <laughs> we do picnics and um, you know it's a lot of fun. We're even talking about going bungee jumping, jumping this summer. Not bungee jumping, skydiving this summer. Skydiving, wow. Um, which was inspired by our last read, uh, Me Before You. Wow, that's so cool. How many are in your club so far? <laughs> I plan on this being a 10 person thing <laughs> just to find out what, what my market was reading, mm -hmm. but it's exploded to 100 and wow. over 160 members. Wow, and, you're, <laughs> and your, club, your bookstore is not even open yet. It's not even open yet, but I have the support of the community has been overwhelming. And um, because there's nothing like this here in the Bronx with 1.4 million that's people true. and 10 colleges, you know, people are just flocking to, you know, just the idea of having a group of like of like-minded individuals where they can, you know, communicate with yeah, about books. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. When, where, so where will it be exactly, the location, and when will we expect to see it open? So we're looking for a space in the South Bronx. Um, mm. We're zoning in on Mott Haven. Okay. But because of real estate market going on there now, um, we're expanding our search to Longwood and the Hunts Point neighborhood. Okay. And um, I'm, we're shooting for a spring 2017 opening. Spring 2017. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's amazing. And so people can, again, uh, get information about this and the upcoming bookstore at the website. Can you say it? It's theletbar.com. Theletbar.com. Mm -hmm. Make sure you guys check it out. It sounds really, really cool. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We have to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Open University. <laughs> Monday night at 9, we talk to the borough's movers and shakers 
about the latest in Bronx politics, education, healthcare, arts and culture, and literally any and everything that's important to the people of the Bronx. There's a reason why Bronxites have been turning to Bronx Talk for more than 20 years. Because Bronx Talk is about you and me, the people of the Bronx. So we'll see you Monday night at 9. If you want to stay in the know about the latest happenings in Espanol, check out Dialogo Abierto, BronxNet's own Spanish show, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. on Channel 67. The latest in news, arts, culture, politics, and what's going on in your neighborhood. Dialogo Abierto, the best way to stay connected in Spanish. See you there. Te esperamos. Are you looking for something to do this summer? If you're a middle school student at any of these schools, you may qualify to participate in the Bronx Gear Up Network Summer Academy at no cost to you or your family. From July 5th to August 5th, participants in the Bronx Gear Up Summer Academy study science and math or humanities on the campuses of Lehman College and Fordham University. Students participate in engaging educational field trips and workshops at the New York Botanical Garden, Wave Hill, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and the Lehman College Art Gallery. For more information, talk to the Academic College Readiness Coach at your school and sign up today. Remember, education is the key to your future. Welcome back. As summer soon ends and school quickly approaches, parents are preparing for back to school shopping. I, I know that as well. <laughs> Here to tell us about the new fashion school trends by showcasing young fashionistas, please welcome CEO and founder of Bronx Fashion Week, Flora Montez. Hello, Flora. Hi. How are you? Thank you for having me. Good. We need this uh, discussion. <laughs> I have my uh, five year old daughter is about to start kindergarten, oh, yeah. and we already have been preparing for yeah, the they're back to school, sh you know, clothes yeah. and stuff. So um, let's, you know, so let's talk about what kind, you know, tell us about Bronx Fashion Week and Young Fashionistas and who do you cater to? Okay, well, Bronx Fashion <coughs> Week started in 2013. I started mm -hmm. planning and we launched 2014. We've had a series of fashion shows mm -hmm. for adults and for teens. Okay. But this time around, we decided to do something a little different because Bronx Fashion Week is going to encompass all kinds of fashion. Mm -hmm. So we decided to do a children's fashion showcase, our first. Yeah. Um, we are launching on August 19th. August 19th. We will be right. at the new mall at Bay Plaza. Oh, wow. And um, I'm very excited about this one. We've been working with the kids in yes. workshops. And they are quite the fashionistas. What's the age? Between the four and 12. Four and 12, how do yes. you, how is that working out? So you're saying they're doing well with it? They're doing very yeah. well. Some of the kids have come in not even being on a runway or in a fashion right. workshop. It could be and they're intimidating. Come, it could be, and they're, they're, I'm so impressed by what wow. they're doing. It's quite impressive how they've evolved. I'm looking forward to seeing them and it's gonna be a great, great show. Plus, it's adorable to see right. them, too. Yeah. I know, I think it is cute to yeah. see the little ones. Mm -hmm. Strutting down the runway. Strutting down the <laughs> runway, yeah. Um, what designers um, are involved We have in a series of different designers. We have um, Young Gods Collection by Unica. Mm -hmm. We have Egypt Eufaili, which mm -hmm. is, she designs Chulibu. She actually is our youngest designer. She's 11 years old, Le oh, 11. And she is, she has a bullying campaign that she started. Yes. So she's going to be one of our designers. We also have Styles by Pauletta, who has beautiful gowns for kids oh, and kid nice. glam. That's really nice. Um, and we have some of the stores participating this year too, which is different. We have Macy's, H&M. Wow and a series of other stores that are coming on now. Gap that's Kids. Big, that's are, big. Yeah, to have they're these. joining us on at Bronx Fashion Week. So what are they gonna, gonna do? Showing. Like how are they Their children's clothing line and we're gonna actually have our models wear their clothing and actually slay the runway. Wow. Yeah. So, what, so tell us, so how did you get to, to, from this point? Like tell us a little bit of your background to get to this well, amazing um, point in your life. I worked 15 years in marketing. Okay. I became a chef. Um, I did a number of events, mm -hmm. and then I ended up going to a fashion show, 
and in Manhattan and yeah. I absolutely fell in love and I thought to myself when I got home that evening mm -hmm. I was like why isn't this in the Bronx why hasn't this been done and that same weekend when I got home I was making phone calls and trying to do everything I could to make this happen because I, I did my homework my research right. I looked into yeah. Manhattan and all those other boroughs and I thought why not the Bronx and so um how did you so what how did you go from like doing chef work to well it's all clothes? the same thing i well it's all basically the same thing i mean f business mm -hmm. in as far as being a chef mm -hmm. it's all business and then my marketing and my advertising experience mm -hmm. i just took that with being a chef mm -hmm. and my networking which i had been right. i had been doing Network. in the bronx for over my god for over 10 years i have been so you pretty much had an established yeah I, network, I did which is huge I did. in a field like yes. this. that's very competitive and right, very exactly. yeah and it's male dominated right, so right. i definitely you know i catered a number of events in the bronx mm -hmm. in new york city i've done movie sets wow. i've you know the last event we catered was at brooklyn borough president's office wow, so we've nice. done i've done you know i have the vast experience the fashion house was just you know something that if I think if you love something enough you can definitely bring something to life and I and I believe that if yeah. you really have that passion to do, do. something it will happen yes um, so what pe what else can people expect from the show you have um, the 4 we to 12 have, yes we have ages 4 to 12 mm -hmm. um, the show is gonna start at 4 o'clock from 4 to 6 we have performances by Barati's dance school mm. we have Caridad La Bruja as our host um, we have all the stores that are going to be there to right. visit, you know, that in itself. So where will it be? How are they going to set this up? Um, if anybody's familiar with the with the new mall, mall, we're yeah. we're definitely going to be we're going to be in Center Court. Okay. So right when you walk in, you right. will see, you know, the fashion show is going to be going on there. So it's going to be pretty packed. It is. We've had a lot of large crowds with Bronx Fashion Week. Our yeah. last event, we had over eight hundred people That's in right. the mall on different floors all looking down at the fashion show. Wow. This is such a first for the Bronx. It's been so embraced. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am so grateful. I mean, it, it's been surreal the um, way Bronx Fashion Week has grown I in know. such a small amount of time and I it's know, been embraced. Because what year is this? This is, the, your this is entering our second year, second, but third right. year of, of oh. actually planning and, and Because business. I know last year we were just discussing yeah. how it was at the old We were at the courthouse. old county courthouse. Right. We started at Andrew Friedman Manor. Right. Then we went to the courthouse. Then we did the mall. Right. And then right. we were just at the Bronx Museum of the Arts. Oh, we were? We were. That's, this June really 5th, cool. we did the butterfly effect which show different aspects of the fashion industry. Right. Um, also, being a woman that is not a size two mm -hmm. and being a woman mm -hmm. that is older starting a company, you know, it, it, the butterfly effect shows the evolution of, of fashion, the evolution of, you know, what's happening with Bronx Fashion Week and our transformation. And I'm proud to say that at the end of this year, on September yeah. 21st, we will also be at the Botanical Gardens. Oh, really? New York. That'll yes, be cool. Yes, that's very, I'm excited. And where, so, and then there's um, going to be some performances. There are. Barati's Dance School. Right, will like be doing said, Bollywood. Right. Okay. We oh, also they'll do Bollywood. They're doing Bollywood, oh, with the kids, because so cool. it's geared towards kids. Right, right. And we also have... Um, we have a Bronx dance school that's coming out to do salsa, dance that's salsa cool. for our guests. So it should be really nice. That's really cool. And um, so again, let's. Where can people get information about the show? They can definitely go to BronxNYFW.com. They can okay. find us on Twitter under Bronx Fashion. They can find us our IG page, <laughs> all the social media sites. If they want more information, they can email me at info at BronxNYFW.com. Um, we answer the emails back pretty fast. We have our Facebook page, which is Bronx Fashion Week. So, and my own personal page, which is under Flora Montez, which right. everybody finds me. Well, thank you, Flora, because I know you're you so busy so at this time. So thank you for taking time thank out you. to come It's been us. a pleasure. All right, thank Thanks. you. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, that is it for our show. Thank you to our guests for joining us today. And most importantly, thank you to our viewers for tuning into Open University. And remember to always let the passion in your soul illuminate your path. Again, I'm Nicole Ayarasi. Until next time.